Amen, somebody. What am I talking about today? Give it one more time. That's my topic. Give it one more time. Do what? Give it one more time. No matter how you are being tempted to give up, give it one more time. No matter how you are feeling like I am tired, I cannot do it anymore, give it one more time. No matter how you feel that this thing is shocking me, this thing is shocking me, I've tried, I've put in all effort, I've done all kinds of things, give it one more more time. No matter how many times you have failed. No matter how many times you have failed disappointment. No matter how many times you have faced rejection. No matter how many times you have tried and tried and tried and you feel that I am tired but I'm here to let you know that give it one more time. In the book of Luke chapter 13, verse 6 to 9. Luke chapter 13, verse 6 to 9. I want everybody to turn their Bible there. And look at the beautiful parable Jesus gave. Are you there? Luke chapter 13, verse 6. And he told them this parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard. And he came looking for fruit on it, but did not find any. So he said to the Vine dresser, see here, for these three years I have come looking for fruit on this fig tree, and I find none. For three years I have been coming to see if I can get something on this, if I can get some fruit, and I find and none. So he said to the fine dresser, fine dresser, see here, for these three years I have come looking for fruit on this fig tree and I find none. Cut it down. Why should it continue also to use up the ground to deplete the soil or intercept the sun and take up room? Why should you let this thing take up the room? Why should you occupy the space? Why should you just occupy the place? Verse 8. But he replied to him, leave it alone. Somebody say, leave it alone. Leave it alone, sir. Just this one more year till I dig around it and I will put vitalizer on the soil. Then perhaps it, it will bear fruit after this. That's fine. But if not, you can cut it down and out. Give it more one year. For three years, the man has been coming whether they will get fruits. And every year it comes, the tree did not bring fruits. You plant a corn or you plant a mango and you expect to see fruits. First year you go, nothing happened. Second year, nothing happened. Third year, nothing happened. Every one of us will think that it is over. If this thing is not going to produce fruit, cut it down. If this fruit is not going to produce anything, Cut it down. Why should it occupy the space? But the servant said to him, Leave it alone for just this one year. 
Let me dig around it and put fertilizer in it and see if it will produce or not. And thereafter, you can decide what to do. And I'm sure after the man has applied fertilizer to it, the fruits came. The fruit what? Came. Listen. It is a known fact that most successful people have failed many times before they eventually succeed. Am I here with somebody today? Hmm. Most what? Successful people have failed many times before they succeed. If you have Big Gate's story, he will tell you how many times he has failed before he succeed. If you ask Elon Musk how many times he has failed before he succeed, he will tell you many times. If you ask Dan Gote, how many times have you tried before you succeed? I'm sure he will have so many times to tell you. Every great people you see today don't just envy their success. They have failed many times before they succeed. What makes them different is that they never give up. They always give it one more time. I have done this business three times and I have failed. They give it one more time. That's why I don't like giving up. I don't like surrender. I believe that there is always a way out. I believe that God is able the only time I will walk away from my dream is when God says stop. As long as I did not hear God say stop, that all I'm seeing is the devil attacking me, I will not give up because the devil is attacking me. I can only give up when God says stop. Am I speaking to somebody here today? Why will I surrender to the devil? Why will I give up? Because of what devil is doing. I will continue visiting it and visiting it and visiting it together. We are all human beings. We are sometimes naturally weak. Naturally we want to surrender. Naturally, we feel that we are tired. Naturally, we say that I have been doing this business. One year, it did not work. Two years, it did not work. Three years, it did not work. I have tried my best. Three years, I have tried. And nothing happened. So if I give up, even devil himself will praise me. But you are not going to get a praise from God. Because God will say to you, I have not asked you to give up. I have not asked you to stop. I have not asked you to surrender. You will not be the first person to have failed and you will not be the first person to have succeeded. Ask every failure that go ahead to succeed. They will tell you they believe in hope. That's why they refuse to surrender to failure. Amen, somebody. Everyone wants a fruitful effort. You want that when you plant, you see results. Everyone, after labor, we expect reward. If you have worked for 30 days, you expect to get salary. Or if you have worked and do work for somebody, you expect the person to pay you immediately. Everybody after labor, they expect some reward. After work, they expect pay. Nobody like to work and at the end of the day, they tell you there is no salary. You have worked on somebody's car and at the end of the day, you just shake. See me up, made a CP and they just turn back and go. Everybody, nobody like work without pay. Everybody 
Everybody wants that when I exert energy on something, I must see results. Money for hand, back for grand. Nobody wants to put back for grand and after I say, Kodabra. Who like it? No. Everybody wants results. Nobody enjoy a fruitless effort. And it is very painful to labor so hard. And when it is time to harvest, to see no fruit of any kind. It is different when somebody pay you half and say, come back and collect the half. But for you to walk and not see anything at all, most of us would like to give up. But I'm saying that not in all cases. Sometimes give it one more time. Sometimes give it one more time. And what do you do? If you are going to give it one more time, you can't be doing it the way you have been doing it. There is something that you will do and that's what I'm here to tell you. If you are going to give it one more time, there is something you have to do. That that same thing you have done for three years, four years, five years, six years that does not produce result. What will make it produce a result this time around? That is the secret I'm here to tell you. Why will I give it one more time? That's why I'm here to tell you. What should I do that is different from others? That's why I'm here to tell you. What will make this one more time different from the other time? That is what I want to tell you today. There is always a secret to success. They will tell you that doing the same thing, the same way, every year and expect different results is total madness. If you don't like the results you are getting, change what you are doing. Am I speaking with somebody today? If you don't like the results you are getting, change what you are doing. Change your style. Change the way you have been doing things. And you will see. Discouragement automatically set in at this stage. After you have labor and you did not see anything, discouragement set in. Listen. And what most people will do at this point is to cut it off. It's not working anymore. Cut it off. I'm not getting any result. Cut it off. It's not going the way I expected. Cut it off. This is not the way I expect it to be after three years. Cut it off. I have been trying and I did not get a result. Cut it off. When discouragement comes, it is automatically for us to take a decision of, I am tired. Cut it off. I'm not doing anymore. Cut it off. Amen, somebody. We like to discontinue when discouragement sets in. I cannot continue any longer. I want you to listen very well. I cannot walk, continue any longer. Cut it off. I am going to withdraw because I'm not seeing results. And I am going to resign. Because it's not working the way I expected it. How many people will take such decision? It is natural. Nobody just wants to work without result. When there are no results, discouragement setting. And when discouragement comes, you stop, isn't it? You have been working for somebody every year, every time, every time. The person does not pay you. The person will come one day and say, Master, I can't do it anymore. It's natural. You have been going to work for six months, no salary. One day you will ask yourself, what am I going to use to feed my children? I'm not working here anymore. I'm resigning. Every time all I hear is, I go better. 
and there's something they will say, he go better na he go chop. I want immediate chop chop, not he go better. <laughs> Stay with me. Let us be doing it. Let's be pushing it. Let's be working. Next month you will get salary. Next month come, no salary. Oh, don't worry. Another month things will be better. Let's try it. Another month comes. Master, I've been working for you for one year. You say next month will be better. Which month will be better? It will be better. Now you will go chop. But there is a way around it. Most people will not consider that it may not be entirely the fig tree fault. The man came first year to look at the victory. Nothing happened. Second year, nothing happened. Third year, nothing happened. And the man gets angry. Say, cut the victory down. But has anybody considered that it may not be that victory problem? But because you look at the victory, there's no foot on you. Cut it down. Could it be my fault? That's why the victory is not producing. Could it be the fault of the soil? That's why he's not producing. Could it be the wine dresser, vine dresser, that is not doing his job very well? That is why he's not producing. But all we just see is that this thing did not give me my result. Cut it off. We don't seem to analyze things better. Amen, somebody. Does somebody understand what I'm talking about this morning? Most people will not consider that it may not be the entire it may not be entirely the fig tree fault. The soil in which you planted it may not be fertile enough to help it to produce the expected fruit. The soil may only give the fig tree nutrient that we used to grow. But it may not have enough nutrients to let it produce sweet. How many people have farmed here before? How many people have farmed here before? If you know about farming, raise up your hand. Oh, you are all city men. You don't know what farming is. You've not done farming before. So you may not understand what I'm going to say. When a farmer farms, And after his food started growing, maybe it's a maize, maybe it's okra, maybe it's mango, anything he planted. After a particular time, the farmer always go back. When he see that the thing should have started be having fruits and is not having fruits, there is something farmer always does. A good farmer will know that it is not the problem of the, let's say, the maize or the corn. That is not the problem. The problem could be the soil. If the soil is not good, the plant will grow, but it will not produce fruit. If you don't know about farming, I'm sure when you are coming here, sometimes you've been seeing some odors by the farmers. They will bring manure, cow dung, all kinds of things with mixed with sawdust. They will mix it with the soil and help the fruit, the plant to produce fruit. Why did they do that? Listen. Giving it one more time with a critical thinking and prayerfully seeking the direction from the Holy Spirit may show you what to do that will cause it to be fruitful. Amen, somebody. I want you to take your time and understand what I'm saying very well. What is critical thinking? You are not just going to see that this thing did not work, so I'm walking away. You must be able to sit down and ask yourself, why is it not working? Is it my fault? 
Is it the fault of my boss? Is it the fault of where we are operating from? What could be the problem? A critical thinking. And prayerfully seeking the direction of the law. On what to do. We show you the secret. Of becoming fruitfulness. Amen somebody. The servant appealed to the master. That though we have waited for three years. It could be that we have not done enough. To help the fig tree. Produce fruits. We have waited for three years, Master. Don't let it cut. Don't let us cut it down. Let us help the fruits, the fig tree, to produce fruits. Let us help the fig tree to produce what fruits. How do you help a tree that you planted to produce fruits? He said, "Give me time, Master." Let me dug and dig around it. I will dig around the fruit tree, all the trees. And I will put fertilizer there. I will put fertilizer there. I will put fertilizer there. I used to help my father to do rice farming when I was very young. And I know after we have planted the rice, after some time, we will go and buy fertilizer. And we will sprinkle the fertilizer in all the farm rice. And for no time, the fruit will just come and come very big. The year that we did not put fertilizer, the rice will produce small, small. Why? Because it is the same soil we keep planting every year. So the soil has lost its strength. It should have supplied enough food, enough nutrient to the rice. But because we have taken it this year, taken it last year, taken it all the time, the soil has become unfertile. And that is why they have produced what is called fertilizer. So when you put it in the soil, it gives it nutrients. Woman being, as we grow, he said, we all need vitamins to functions. Because it will get to a time your body cannot give you all that you need. So when you take multivitamins of all different types, it helps your joint, it helps your bone, it helps your immune system, it helps your organs, it helps every part of your body to function very well. That's why when you get to a certain age, you have to be taking vitamins. When you get to a certain age in life, you have to be taking what? Vitamins. If not, you cannot eat all the balanced diet that all your body needs. So the vitamins is what will be helping your body to produce. When your body is young, it can produce everything you need. But as the age set in, as you started growing, you need vitamin. He said they call it supplement, food supplements. And it will be helping you. You are healthy, you can bounce well, you are doing very well because what the food cannot get you, you get it from the supplements. You take small from the food and you get the rest from the supplements. If not, your body will dry up. If not, you will have problem with your system. If not, you will not function very well. You will be complaining about pain here today, pain here tomorrow. This thing is happening to me. That thing is happening to me. Your skin will wrinkle. Somebody look at me and say, your skin fresh with your age. He said, you don't look at your age. I said, because I take care of this body. I have a lot of vitamins that I take. Because I know that I can't eat the balanced diet all the day. So I use vitamin to supplement it. 
And that's why you are in your 20. Your body has wrinkled. I'm in my 50. My body is like a baby. Because I take care of it. I'm not relying on the anointing alone. I'm also combining supplements. Amen, somebody. Because there are things of the spirit and there are things of the physical. You, how many greens do you eat? How many vegetables you eat? When they give you vegetables, you say, I'm not an animal. I'm not a goat. I can, I mean, every time you give me vegetable, vegetable, am I goat? So you are not eating what will help your body to grow very well. So you better take it in supplements. Vitamins to help your body keep moving. The same thing in our life. The reason why that thing is not producing the results you want, you are not adding the extra vitamins you need to let that thing work. Master, we have left this victory alone to produce, but you've forgotten that the soil is not good. That's why this victory is not able to produce. Let me dig around and help it by putting fertilizer. So the reason why some Things are not happening in your life is that you are leaving that thing alone to happen by itself. You are not helping that thing to happen. I don't know if I'm making sense in the house today. Help that dream to come to pass. Help that vision to come to pass. Help that business to break through. Help that marriage to work. Help your children to succeed. Help your partner to make it in life. Help. Don't just say this thing should happen by itself. You have to help to make it happen. By applying fertilizer. You will be helping it to grow. Amen somebody. Sometimes we expect some certain people to behave in a certain way. But we don't invest in them to behave in that particular way. I want my wife to be able to give me ideas when we are talking. But you've forgotten your wife left school at primary six. So if you want a wife to be giving you such idea, encourage your wife to go back to school. Get an adult teacher for your wife. Say, honey, every weekend, you and I will be studying with our teacher. Encourage the person. He said, my wife behaved like a bush woman. Have you ever done anything to make her like a city girl? No, you did not invest in her. What you don't sow, you don't harvest. You just leave her to develop on her own. How will she become what you want? She will give you sorrow all her life. Because you did not invest in her change. Some of you, the reason why your home is in shambles is that you are the only one developing. Your wife is not developing. You go to everywhere you hear good word. You go to everywhere you hear a better word. And you leave your wife to be hearing nonsense. She will be giving you the nonsense she's hearing while you will be producing the good result you are hearing and you are complaining. Why are you complaining? Fatalize your wife. Tell your neighbor, fatalize your wife. Fatalize your wife. What is fertilizer? It's a chemical and natural substance added to the soil or land to increase its fertility. Chemical or natural substance added to soil or land to increase its fertility. For this thing to grow, you have to add fertilizer to it. So you ask yourself, what fertilizer am I adding to my business? 
What fertilizer am I adding to my life? Before you give up, ask yourself first, have I added enough fertilizer? Before you leave that place, ask yourself, have I tried different thing here? Ask yourself one question. Is this the best I can offer? Or I've tried all possible best. I am your pastor. Sometimes I feel so much discouraged. That, Why am I coming here every Sunday? I can do so much with my life. But instead of me quitting, I went back to God about four years ago. The Lord, you have given me so much. But there are some few people that only hear what I'm saying. What should I do? So that your word can go far. Amen. And the Lord began to open my eyes. He said, why don't you start hope of the day? I've called you for a message of hope. This is what I want you to tell the world, not the people in Jehovah alone. This is what I want you to tell the world, not in Ghana alone. If you don't have TV, if you don't have radio, no, you can reach out to millions of people. And the idea of hope of the day came. And from this category of wood, we started sending message of hope. Today, I can tell you confidence that message of hope is in over 54 nations of the world. Confidently tell you this. is in Europe. is in Asia. is in America. is in Australia. I know somebody from, uh, from uh, New Zealand. After Australia is what? Well, New Zealand, right? From New Zealand. That normally requests for hope of the day every day for me. She's a Pakistani woman residing in New Zealand. Every time. It's in America. It's in Arab. People in the Arab, anytime I fail to send it early in the morning, they bombard my phone. From this place, we fertilize our efforts. And that's why I'm not discouraged. I just preached to you on Sunday alone. But people that receive the message after, they are millions. And I can tell you with confidence that over 2 million people receive the message of hope every day. Am I not fulfilled? But the time came. I look at this. I am so discouraged. My friend called me and said, what are you still doing in Africa? Come to America. I have an offer. Come to UK. Why do you want to waste your time with these people here? They don't give you anything. Come and make use of your life. You are a fine preacher. Come over. My people keep calling me. Leave this place and come. Hand it over to anybody. Yes, of course. I've become discouraged as a person myself. Just like the man, after three years, do you know how many years I've been preaching this message of hope? The man got discouraged and said, cut it off. I'm tired. Remove the tree. If I go and I don't come back, what will you do to me? I just keep telling you, okay, when are you coming, pastor? Next month. When are you coming, pastor? Next month. Away, dada. I've grown America. <laughs> you can't do me anything. I just tell you, after a while, I say, the Lord asked me to be here. So you continue in Africa. <laughs> but I know it's not America that is hungry me. It's fulfillment that is hungry me. I'm not looking for money. I'm looking for destiny. I can be in that America and I will not be fulfilled. But I ask God, how do I fertilize this work that my message of hope can go all over the world? And the Lord said, I was somewhere yesterday and we went for a meeting and an astute banker came to me and said, Thank you for the message of hope you sent to me every morning. My friends love it. When I put it on my status, come and see people commenting. I want to thank you, Pastor, for this. A woman called me and he said me that, 
pastor, I am in a women group. And in my women group, there are 50 women, I mean 50 countries. We are in 50 countries. And we have one platform. See, every morning when you send the hope of the day to me, I put it on that platform and the message go to 50 nations all immediately. You see, all women from 50 nations, they see message of hope. I can tell you today, we have more followers in Zambia than we have in Ghana. Zambia. We have more people that follow me in Zambia than we have in Ghana. They say, Pastor, the day you come to Zambia, we are going to give you presidential visits. Last year, they pushed me, pushed me as you come. I promised them that this year, 2022, I'm coming to Gambia. Zambia. I'm coming to Zambia. Once, uh, it's like they don't appreciate you very well in Ghana. When you come to Zambia, we won't let you go back. I was there one day and one of them called me and he said, Pastor, tonight you have to pray for us because the wife of the president has requested that you should pray for us tonight. That he's been following your message. I could have given up that all this year I'm preaching. It's the same thing we are here. Where two or three are gathered. That's where the Lord is. Where two or three are gathered. I could have given up. But the Lord said there is a way you can fertilize your work. And hope of the day is a household name now all over the world. People see it. I cannot be sharing the testimony with you every day. It's too much. I was here just one day. And all of a sudden, I received 300 Ghana CD credits. And I received a call because I don't know where it comes from. A man called me and said, Pastor, I am coming from United States, of uh, United Kingdom. I'm in UK. I know that you are using credit to send this message every morning. And I just want to buy 300 Ghana CD credit for you because that is what I can do. I check Ghana and I can see that I can send credit to you from there. So that's why I buy this 300 Ghana CD credit because this message is affecting lives. If you want to clap, clap well for Jesus. Somebody say fertilizer. I was there one day. A doctor called me from the same UK. And he said, I'm a clinical psychologist. I'm a big psychologist in UK. Pastor, I want to ask something from you. And I said, what is it? He said, can I be using your hope, hope of the day messages for my clients? Because they are worried that they will bring their hope back. I want to ask permission from you so that I can be using it to counsel my patients. And he said, you have my permission. Somebody say fertilizer. I could have given up and said, it's not bringing results the way I want. But there is something you can still do around your vision. You can put fertilizer around your vision. And that thing that is not producing result, that thing that is not yielding fruit, that thing that is not yielding result, we change in the year. Give it one more time. Let me put fertilizer around it and see how it will be. It is not the entirely it is not entirely on the plant to produce fruits. No. The soil, the farmer also have role to play. You just take a, a corn, let's say you take a corn and you put it on the soil the, and you want it alone to produce fruit, it will not produce fruit. Why? The soil has a role to play. Even you, the farmer that planted, you have a role to play for that thing to produce results. A good plant in a bad soil will not yield the expected results. Also, a good plant 
in a good soil that is neglected by the farmer will not produce well will not produce well because the weed will choke it if the farmer doesn't remove it. Let me explain now. It is not entirely left to the plant or the tree to produce food. As a farmer, you make sure the soil is good. And also, you make sure that you remove the weed around it before the thing can produce results. If you plant in a good soil, let us assume that the soil is good, the seed is also good. If you, the farmer, you are careless and you don't remove the weed around it, the weed will kill the plant. Is that not so? And if it doesn't kill it, the thing, the food that the plant should have eaten, all the weeds will share it together. Instead of the thing to grow like this, it will grow like this and stop. So it's a combined responsibility. Combined efforts. That is why they keep saying, if you point one finger to somebody, the remaining one is what? Pointing to you. Oh, it is madame that is doing me. Look at the remaining three. You are doing, three is doing you. You are doing yourself. That's why people who keep blaming others never go far in life. Because they will not see their own mistake. They will not see their own effort. They keep saying, it is your fault. It is your fault. You too, have you considered what is my fault? And how do I rectify my fault? If the soil is not good and the plant is good and the farmer is good, it will not produce good results. If the soil is not good, the farmer is not good, the plant will die. If the soil is not good, the plant is not good and the farmer is not good, you will die before you even rise. So for it to produce the result, everybody must be doing what they are expected to do. Oh, my boss is not paying me. That's why we are not getting money. My boss is not paying me. That's why you are not getting money. Meanwhile, when your boss sends you to go around and see clients, you take company car. You load your own clothes in the car. You roam to your clients for money. When it's evening, you not go back. Boss, you didn't buy anything today, crowd. And at the end of the month, your boss does not have money to pay you. And you now say, there is something wrong with this company. They are owing me, they are not paying me. It's because you did not do what you are supposed to do. Let me tell you this. A woman has been working for, in a company for 10 years. On the 11th year, he now said, I have been in this company for 11 years. But I have only been working for this company for one year. Ask yourself, how can you be in a company for 11 years and you only work for the company for one year? He said, for 10 years, my boss think I am working. When I'm on computer, I'm using it to solve my own problem. When I'm on assignment, I'm using it to solve my own problem. When they ask me to go and do things, you know white people can confess. It is you black, you will not confess your sin. Even if they put sword in your neck, you will still say, I didn't do it. But you know white people, they can confess their sin. But you, even if they put pepper in your eyes, this is how your eyes will open. You won't close it. Eh? Even put pepper in the black man's eye. This is how he will be watching you. That pepper, even though he's peppering him, that's how he will be looking at you. He said, after 10 years, my boss caught me. 
that the reason why we are not having resort in this company is that I thought you are working for us. You are in the computer from morning to evening. You are using it to do your own chatting. You are using it to sell your own product in the company. You are using it to, you know, even when we have something, you will send it to another place to make money. Have you not been to some of the nurses? I don't want to mention some hospital. In the hospital, there is a government pharmacy. But the nurses who are there have open pharmacy in their bag. Anybody that go to hospital here we can we know the truth. When you ask the doctor write the thing for you to go and buy, the nurse will tell you, bring money. It's in my bag. Then they will be making money, selling the product, selling the product. Pharmacy, government pharmacy will be there. And one year, the drug is still there. Two years, the medicine is still there. They are not buying, but nurse is selling. Nurses are selling, but government is not selling. They've opened bookshop in the, in the school. But teachers have their own bookshop in their bag. When you say, buy this book, the teacher will say, I'm the one teaching your children. Bring the money. I have the book. If you don't buy from the teacher to your children, will fail. And the school bookshop will be suffering. They didn't buy. They didn't buy. But everybody is getting book. But they didn't buy. Where are they getting the book from? Teachers are selling books. Teachers are selling books. Teachers are selling books. I read a story that a principal, a publisher, he published a book and he said the book is two CD. I'll be giving it to the school for two CD. Then the principal take the book and he give it to the teacher for three CD. The, the publisher said he's giving us this book for three CD. You know, teacher, the principal has made one CD. Teacher too went to classroom and told the students the principal has given me this book. Tell your parent it's five CD. The mothers who normally pick the children at school say, mommy, 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 they ask us to buy a book or we should bring it to how much the students say six CD. Then the mother also now take the book and said, Oh, darling, they asked your son to buy a book. How much is the book? 15 CD. This kind of thing, the women make money more than men. 15 CD. Then the man also have had somebody who said, Anytime your children need something, they are my cousin. I want to be sponsoring them. Anytime they need somebody, you tell me. Then in our call, uncle, your son need book in school. Oh, how much is this? 50 CD. <laughs> the publisher of the book making two CD. But at the end of the day, somebody who did not contribute anything at all, they are making 40 CD, 10 CD, 20 CD, 2 CD. Everybody is corrupt. Everybody is corrupt one way or the other. And many women will bear me witness that the so way they call you because it is the women who go to school. It is the bill they give to their husband they take. And you student too, you know. If your parents are, didn't go to school, one book, you will sell it for them as three book. Daddy, they ask us to buy three book. Oh, what is that book? Bao, Law, and G. Three books. Bao, Law, G. It's the book we need for biology students to biology class. It's three books. Bao, Law, and G. Everybody corner everybody. Everybody corner everybody. One day I was driving the car. 
And I'll enter into gallop. And the car went off. I start the car, the car won't start. I try, it won't start. And I went and called electrician around my place. And I said, electrician, come and see this car. I'll just come home and the car stop. He start, pew, the car refused to start. He looked at it, he looked at it, he said, Pastor, go and come. I went. When I came, he said, ah, terminator. And the switchboard, he measured more than five things that are spoiled in this car. So I have to take it out and go to Abosua Kain. Your money is 250 Ghana. And I said, ah, this car that I just drove here right now. And I said, ah, that's how it is. So the thing has been. Meanwhile, sometimes ago, the car stopped in my hand. And I noticed that because of our gallop, switch, you know the fuse. Sometimes when you get to gallop, it can remove. Something say, go and press the fuse. And I just went around the car. I said, open the bonnet. Open the bonnet. Open the fuse something for me. I said, I press it. I press all the fuse. And I said, let me try it. When I put the car, boom, the car starts. I said, master, I'm coming. I'll give you the 250. Let me go. See, this is how this man wants to chop me 250 for nothing. Fuse that just come out, all of them, they just to press it down. 250 Ghana CD. Abu so kind, this thing has spoiled, this thing has spoiled, this thing has spoiled. Hey, if you are handy made person, if you are not careful, to go to heaven will be difficult too. Yo, me, I say my own, no. A good school with a good teacher. But careless parent will produce bad students. Hello? A good school with a good teachers with a bad parent will produce bad students. Let me explain to you. Sometimes you feel that you are spending money on your students, on your ward, on your child. But the child can learn very well. The child is not brilliant. Ask yourself, have I been a good parent? Did I fertilize my child to produce results? You have gone to pay big school fees for your children. The school is very good. The teacher has teach them very well. This teacher now, this student now came back home. They have been given assignment to do. You parent is not care about the assignment. All you care about, a child of three, four, five, six, they will watch TV until 10. They have not gone to bed. Your child come home, instead of him to regulate your TV and computer. They will be on their computer game. Ah, they will be on their this thing. Ah, they will play till 10, 11. One day I went to visit somebody. At 10 o'clock, six years old child is still playing in the sitting room. And I say, is this child going to school tomorrow? He said, yes. And I tell you that, do you know that children that are under 6 to 10, they need almost 10 hours sleep for their brain to research very well. If they don't have that 10 hours sleep, they go to school. Whatever teacher is teaching is not entering their head because they didn't have enough rest. So you say, this child is not good. This child can't learn. This child does not know book. You yourself, do you fertilize your children? You should have make sure they sleep early, they do the assignment, cut them off and let them go to bed early and rest. Oh, watch TV with me. You are watching Esmeralda. You are watching Kukumbaja. You are watching... Uh, mention it. Mention your thing you have been watching. Yeah? Kukumbaja. Uh, Hollywood, uh, what is it called? The Indian Channel. Sea World. Sea World. One upon there was a king. Face for face. Mm -hmm. That's what they've been watching. They 
watch it. Ah, they couldn't rest. Then when they go to school the following day, they are sleeping in the class. Good teacher has taught them very well. But it's only half that enter their brain. And he said, my child is not doing very well. Start watering them. Don't say your child will not go to school again because I'm paying school fees. You are not passing exam. I'm paying school fees. You are not passing exam. What are you doing as a parent? A good school, good teacher with bad parents, that child will produce zero. Because the teacher will not come home with you. It is your responsibility that you make them prepare. And when you let them go to bed early, you let them do the assignment. You don't let them occupy themselves with so many. Children's brain cannot take so much. So, you, after they are done in school, you make them watch this cartoon, watch this thing, watch that thing. When they go to school, it's what they have watched all through. It's what is in their head. They learn for six hours. They watch TV for eight hours. They watch in the morning. They watch on their game. They watch and come and sit down with you. When you're supposed to let them sleep, they won't sleep. They are with you all the time. And you expect good fruits. You are lying. Am I speaking with somebody today? That is why the Bible says, train up your children the way they should go. I wish all parents can listen to this message. Instead of you beating that child when they fail, beat yourself. When that child go back, come back from school and they score one over ten, ask yourself, what did I do wrong? Not what that child do wrong. And I can tell you, if you start fertilizing the soil of that child and started doing the right thing you are supposed to do, that child you think is very dull may be the brilliant person in the school. Give that child a good environment. Fertilize a soil or a soil and that child will come back better. Don't let them watch what they are not grown up to watch. Don't say because when you are growing, you didn't watch TV. So your children now should watch TV. Don't let them go on internet and just be doing whatever they like on internet. Don't buy phone for two, three, four years old child. You, they are having phone. They have internet on their phone. They can do everything. Sometimes they will tell you, I'm going to bed, mommy. They will go and lie down on their room. Until one o'clock, they are still playing game. Two o'clock, they are playing game on their, on their phone. They are watching movie. They are going to site, which you, your father, cannot watch. They are watching it. Their brain has been saturated with nonsense. And you tell them, go to school and learn and pass. How will they pass? Let me stop here today. I have not finished. I'll break my message to part A and part B. The soil can only produce. That's why I say, leave it one more time. Let me dig around it and change some things. And see if that thing will not produce results. Dig around your business and see if it will not produce results. Fertilize your ground and see if you will not get better results. You keep doing it the same way and you want different results. Change your style and you will see different results. Change your way of doing things and you will see better results. Blame yourself and say, what am I doing? You see, the man, it's easier to blame anybody. It's easier to blame other people. How many people have said that, oh, this thing is not working. I blame myself. This thing, this thing, this thing is what I'm doing that did not let it work. Hey, you this child. Hey, you this man. Hey, all this my worker. Hey, all these people are the one that does not let this company grow. You ask yourself, you are the boss. Instead of you to come and monitor your business. Today, I'm going to Venera. Tomorrow, I'm coming to Venera. They say that I'm going to Venera. Money they should use to do something where you are. Wedding, Venera, this and that. You think you are the Ogboro. When you are supposed to be at your workplace, you sleep at 12 o'clock is when you wake up. And you are coming. And all the houses, girl, 
they have sell in the money and they have replaced it with. I know some people, they are selling mineral in their shop. The madam doesn't come until one o'clock. People come, breakfast, it's around 10, they will come and buy something in that store. What the house sell, normal, all the sales girls normally do is that if they are selling uh, biscuits, tam tampico, this and that, they will buy their own, come from the home and hide it in their bag. When they sell the madam home, they quickly replace it before madam comes. So when madam comes, oh, have you not sold anything today? Oh, no, no sales today, oh, madam. And the company kept dying. And you are not asking yourself, what am I doing? You come to work at 12 and you expect that business to succeed because you think you are borrowed now. Something should have come early. One of the reasons why I like Simon is that he comes to work 7 o'clock. 7. He lives far away. But 7 o'clock, I'm seeing him around here. Let's see how somebody will repair car before he comes and he will not know. In some workshop where the boss comes at 12 o'clock, the boys will have repaired two or three cars and they go. Has any customer come today? Oh, master, no, no customer cry. <laughs> because you don't come early. How we know? But when the boss is here early, let's see what will happen. Let's see what will happen. What do you do about your career? What do you do about your job? Sit down and ask yourself, how am I fertilizing my job? How am I fertilizing my destiny? How am I fertilizing my life? What do I need to add to it so that this thing can produce foods? Instead of you doing the same thing every day, every day, every day. Change! And God will bless you. Rise on your feet.